When learning something new like 3D modeling, many ideas will appear straightforward. You can apply an extruded bus to get a cube or apply a revolve to get a sphere. However, when the same is applied to real-life problems like 3D modeling a simple engine, a lot of issues often appear out of nowhere. That's why project-based learning can be very effective. So what is project-based learning and how can it assist you learning a skill like 3D modeling with SOLIDWORKS? Let's talk about this. Project-based learning happens when you develop knowledge and skills by engaging with projects based on meaningful, real-life problems. In the case of 3D modeling, this can be done by modeling everyday objects like a headset, a vacuum flask, an engine, etc. Such projects help you grow your 3D modeling skill and enhance other skills like critical thinking, creativity, perseverance, and self-confidence. So, in this video, we are going to 3D model a specific artifact. We encourage you to join us in this exercise as it will help you polish your SOLIDWORKS 3D modeling skills and make you more confident using the software. Let's get started. In this little project, we are going to make a simple phone holder like the one you see on the screen. The holder consists of three simple parts. We have all the drawings linked in the description so you can download them, pause the video, and 3D model the project yourself. Okay, I hope you had a good try at this simple project. Let's go ahead and do it together real quick. So I have my SOLIDWORKS open and I'm going to start with the first part. Now, I don't really know the source of this design, so somebody gave me this design and now it's my job to just replicate it real quick. So I'll go ahead and do front plane for this and start doing a simple outline. So I have two circles. And then I have some lines going. Sorry, that's a circle. Let me change to lines. And then I have a line that goes like this. And then an arc. Now to change to an arc, you can click A. That will change between a line and an arc. So that's the arc I want, and then I'll click A again to change to another arc, and then click A again to change to yet another arc, and then continue extending the line. Those two lines are supposed to be tangent, so I'll go ahead and apply that relation. And now I can start adding dimensions to my sketch. So I'll go to Smart Dimensions and I'll start with the inner circle. This one is supposed to be 10. And then the outer circle is given as 20. And now I can start adjusting the other lengths. So I'll go ahead and change this one here to 63. and change this one to 72. This curve right here is 1.2. This one here is 6.5. And this one here is 10 millimeters. And this right here is 4.5 millimeters. So I'm pretty much done with all my dimensions, at least the main ones, but the sketch I have is still underdefined. I still have an angle dimension, the 26 degrees. So let me go ahead and do this real quick. So I'll create a line like this, and this line should be a construction geometry, and it is set to vertical, and then I have an angle here set to 26. 
and this pretty much fully defines my sketch. Now I have my sketch done, I can go ahead and apply my extruded boss feature. So I'll go to extruded boss, and then for the selected counter, I will select this one right here, and then dimension this by 86, and then apply that. Now I'll go ahead and select the same sketch, and then apply another extrusion, and this time I will select this right here for my contour, and I will change the dimension to 18 millimeters. And then click on the green check mark. Now there's another one of those holes on the other side. So I have two options here. I can either introduce a new plane and mirror it, or I can apply another extruded boss. So let me go ahead and mirror it real quick. So I'll go ahead and select my top plane, click control and drag. And then for my references, I'll change the front plane to this face right here. And for my second reference, I select this other face. And this will immediately select the midpoint between them as a default. So I'll go ahead and click on the green check mark. Now I'll go to mirror. I'll have that selected as my mirror face. And for my feature to mirror, I'll select this last extrusion, click on the green check mark, and this finishes my first part. So I'll go ahead and save that, and I will call it part one. Phone holder. Let me do the other part. So I'll start a new file a new part file as well, and then do the same thing here. So I'll go to front plane, and then I will do two circles, and then sketch this line going downward. Click A on the keyboard, have my arc, do my other line, and that's pretty much for the outline. I'll go ahead and start building relations and dimensions. So this right here is 10 millimeters. This upper one is 20. Again, this right here is 68.4. And this dimension here is three. That still doesn't fully define my sketch. So let me go ahead and apply the angle. So I have this line right here. I'll change it to construction line. And then I'll use it to restrain an angle of 30 degrees. That's pretty much it for my general outline. Now I can go and apply my extrusion. So I'll do an extruded boss. I'll select both counters for this. And my dimension here is going to be 50, just like I have in the drawing given to me. I'll go ahead and save this other part as well. And I'll call it part two, phone holder. I still have a third part, which is the rod that connects both parts together. However, let me go ahead and just skip over that and start an assembly instead. So here I have my assembly. I'll go ahead and drag in part one and then insert components and drag in part Two. I just realized on my second part, we forgot to apply a fillet right here of about three millimeters. And that's okay, I'm already here in the assembly. So what I can do is I can edit the components while I'm here. I don't really need to leave it. So I'll click on the part and click on edit part. Click on okay, and then go to my features go to the fillets and then add my fillet right here, which has a radius of three millimeters. And that finishes it with the fillet that I messed out. 
Let me go ahead and restrain this now real quick. So I'll go ahead and apply a concentric relation right here. I want to have the filleted part to the outside. So I'll go ahead and flip this like this and then apply that relation. I can apply another relation to have this part, second part, be centered around the first part. So I'll do an advanced relation for this and I'll use the width. And then I will select those two surfaces as my width selection and those two surfaces as my tab selections. And then click on the green check mark. Now I have my part or I have my phone holder almost ready. It does rotate as we are expecting it to be. This is restrained to 0 to 60 degrees. So let me go ahead and restrain that real quick. I'll use this relation of angle range. And for the minimum or maximum, I'll add in 60. And for the minimum, I'll add in 0. For the main selections, I'll select this face right here and this face right here. Again, this is not really what I want. So let me go ahead and change the alignment. And that's exactly what I want. I'll go ahead and click on the green check mark. This pretty much finishes it for the holder itself. I'm still missing the rod that goes in this hole from start to finish. So instead of going on and starting a new part and creating that rod, I'll just go ahead and start it here in the assembly. So I'll go to insert components and select new part. I'll select this surface right here as my stable edge or my stable face. And then I will select this inner edge and click on convert entities, go to features, apply an extrusion, change the end condition to surface and then select this surface right here click on the green check mark and now i have my rod made or ready to fit in the hole and go from start to finish and you will notice that i have a new part added in my case it's part 11 that represents the rod that goes in between now i'm done with this first version of the design, let's talk a bit. One of the ways I often build 3D models is to go on cycles. I do this because I end up being involved in the creative side of the design cycle. So in the first cycle, which we did together, I would go quick and simple to get the overall general shape, which is what we just did. This can get us to a stage where we can have a quick overall evaluation of the design as a whole. And if we are starting off multiple designs, this can quickly get us to a stage where we can do early eliminations of designs that we don't want to take forward. If we move to a more advanced stage, we can come back to those simple designs and do more work on them in the software. We're going to leave it here in this video, however, I would invite you to take this challenge yourself and modify the simple designs towards some of the following objectives. 1. How can we optimize the 3D model for rapid iterations? For example, we can link key dimensions and different parts together and maybe link them to variables and generate different versions through design tables. 2. How can we adjust the design to be friendlier to a specific manufacturing process? For example, if we 3D print this phone holder, we'll have to consider clearances between the different parts. For FDM 3D printing, a general rule of thumb is to have a clearance of about 0.25 to 0.5 millimeters to allow movements, or less than that if we just want to have a sort of transitional fit. And 3. How can we modify the design to improve the user experience? What can we do to have the rod stick in its place? Or what can we do to make rotating the two sides of the phone holder more smooth? Maybe we can add something that adds a satisfying clicking sound. So after this video, you can have a thought about your next cycle and start making further adjustments to your design 
to make it your own. Make sure to share what you did in the comments below as well. Let me go back in front of the camera to wrap up. Now we are done with this little project, you might have a better idea of how effective project-based learning is and how it can make learning SOLIDWORKS more interesting. If you want to learn SOLIDWORKS through more exciting projects, we have a fully structured program based on several meaningful real-world objects which will push you to your limits and hone your SOLIDWORKS skills. The link to this program is in the description down below. Check it out and hope to see you there.